Looky here. We got to test the BMW K1600 GT. Helga's in for a little service. So the lads here at Cooper's in Tunbridge Wells. Nice idea. Threw me the keys. I said, try this bad boy out. Now this is a big old haddock. Oh, wow, seat in position. That feels really good. Let me change the mode. So dynamic. And where is that's it set on dynamic suspension and dynamic mode. Alright, there's all manner of gadgets. No idea what they do. Alright, seating position. It's a lovely nice and firm seat. But the pegs feel really high up compared to the GS. Not unbearable by any shape or form. It's a beautiful big screen. You're totally closeted in there. Oh, it feels really light. Right, it was just, oh, bloody hell. Because it doesn't actually feel like you're doing anything. You look down and you are. But it doesn't have that throaty roar that the Boxer engine has. smooth and by god is that fast that's effortless an electric screen you see there this button here if you watch the screen tilt it right down tilt it right up this is a 1.6 litre engine 1.6 Mrs Teapot's car is only I think it's 1.4 or 1.2. Already, I could tell that this thing will just munch miles. I've only got this for tonight and tomorrow. I'll pick Helga up tomorrow on the way in for night duty. So I'll commute into town, commute home tomorrow, maybe have a little play tomorrow afternoon, and then go and pick up Helga. So this is just going to be a first ride. The instruments all look very familiar, same layout as the GS. Got your modes, heated grips and everything over on the right hand side, ignition there. It's also the SOS function which the GS Adventure had. On the left hand side you have, ooh, what's the R stand for? Don't know, you've got the menu buttons, you've got the switch activation for your electric screen. You have, is that fogs? Fogs, hazards, cruise control, flash indicators horn. I definitely say a low down, it doesn't feel like it's got the grunt of the GS, but I imagine top end on this, well I mean it's showing 170 on the clocks, I dare say this thing would probably be good for 150, maybe 160. If you check out one of the Pico's vids I did, I'll put the link up there, or up there, one of the sides, or even down below, I'll put a link anyway. And you'll see there that one of the lads from my work, Mickey Pierce, he had one of these for about eight or nine months. He's a seasoned GS owner and he decided he needed a change, so decided he would try something else. Tried one of these, loved it, said it was rapid fast, and by God that thing could be thrown around the twisty mountains of Spain. But Mickey Pierce is a bit of a legend rider. He could probably drive a milk float at Mach 10 around those twisties. However, it's pretty impressive what this great big haddock will do in the right hands. It's not tickling my danglish yet after leaving the inline four engines. I think I've been ruined by going to triples, V4s, parallel twins, flat twins, that sort of thing. They just have a lot more character for me. However, we'll see. This is early days. It's got loads of power there if you need it. 
It just doesn't come in a big boom. It's just progressive power. It's not slow, progressive. Which I suppose on a sport tourer like this, that's exactly what you're supposed to have. So this is my first proper video with the new GoPro Hero 7 setup since doing the vlogger meetup with TMF, Lamb Chops and Richie Vida over in Spain with Toro Adventure. What do you think? I am astounded by the quality of the GoPro. And while I was in Spain, I had no technical issues. Fingers crossed. I remember the last time I used these things on my round the world trip, there were nothing but problems. Well, that was the old Hero, Hero 2 and 3 Plus. We shall see. I forgot my mount for the Session 5 for the cockpit cam. So you won't be able to see my ugly mug, I'm afraid. Gotta say, the quick shifter and blipper on this thing are like butter. Absolutely gorgeous. Takes a little bit getting used to it. I like the setup actually on the dash. Once you know where things are, it's very easy to read. Very quick, very easy. It's a mixture of the um, digital fuel, fuel gauge there, gear indicator, temperature sensor, entertainment system readout is all there. All of that jazz. Very easy to read. And then you have an analog speedometer which shows both miles per hour and kilometers per hour. Nice brand in there, K1600 GT. Not sure what that is. I'll take it that must be for a sat nav if you get a sat nav built in, I'm assuming. Well, hang on a minute, that little button on the left. Maybe you push that and that's a cover. I'll have a look when I um, get to work and report back. So it's getting a bit nippy on the hands. Where are the heated grips? I don't know where the heated grips are. This thing must have heated grips, surely. The suspension feels lovely. Quite a few bumps along this road, which is not bad at all, actually. Feels a bit firmer than the GS, to be expected, but it's soaking all this up. Mirrors are lovely. Lots of vision behind. Very, very stable. It's weird not having... I love the GS, I really do. But it, it is a very vibey bike. This is just smooth. No vibration at all on this. Lots of you asking about how is it going to be for commuting? Because it is quite a big wide bike. But we're just a way to find out. Don't think it's any wider than the GS. We will soon see. Now, has this got the hill hold? It does. So it's got the hill hold function. You just pull hard on the front brake and then let go and you see there's a little H comes up. And to get that to come off, all you do is apply the brake again. I used to think it was a total gimmick, much like keyless, keyless ignition, but it's actually pretty handy. Before I realised that all you had to do to disengage it was pull up, pull the brake again, before that we thought you had to you know, pull away, but in order to pull away, you'd have to give it some. And then if you didn't give enough, you'd stall, or otherwise you'd just lurch forward, and I thought, this is a bit clumsy. Actual fact, all you need to do is pull the brake, and then that's it, done. It's almost like BMW know what they're doing. Almost. No, I wouldn't fit through. Yeah, I would. In fact, I think I could probably get through that, but there's no point. Just yet. Yeah, it's got loads of punch. Mm, nobody wants to say hello. No, nobody. Yes, I know I'm not supposed to be in here. Now the exhaust has got a lovely rasp and burble when you roll off. Good man. Now I think this is shaft drive. Pretty sure it's shaft drive. Very quiet. I do miss that noise of the GS. I feel a little bit vulnerable. Right, this is where we'll really see if you can commute on such a big beast.
short changing, short shifts, doesn't seem to like that too much. Like the GS just whop, 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 up through the box. Ride it much like a, well, like an inline four, funnily enough, and use the full length of the, uh, the rev range, and it's much smoother. Common sense, really. Certainly doesn't feel like the instant pull that the GS has, but you've got to wind it up a little bit more. If you go down to first from, say, you're in third or fourth, and you're pulling up to a junction, and you're going for first, so you go down, down, down. Right, you get down to first, and normally I'd expect there to be something solid there, once I'm at first, but this just feels like you can keep on flapping down, so you're never sure if you're in first or not. Very weird. Let's see if I can filter down the front. Yeah, loads of room. I need a pee. No way you cry. Yes way. Would you believe it? When I actually want to test something in commuting traffic, there isn't any. And people are staying out the bus lanes. Normally this is just rammed full of buses. And cyclists. We'll find them. We'll find them. battle with everybody. You see that cyclist, she's got no helmet, she's got a pink high-vis bib with baby on board on it, and she's got a kid sat on her lap. There she is. You utter imbecile. No issues so far with the commute, and the GoPro seems to be recording. Happy days. Nothing wrong with that for a commute. Right folks, I'm nearly at work, so I'll join you again in the morning when I head home. Well folks, that's another scintillating night duty done and dusted. A little chat with Mickey Piers there, because he used to have one of these. I didn't realise this thing's got a reverse gear. That's what the R is. It's also got a nice little cubby hole there for your sat-nav, which I didn't know about. I did wonder why there wasn't a sat-nav on this. Oh, well, that's where it is. It's located just in there. Heated grips apparently are accessed via the control wheel. So I'll have to try and find them. And it's got an FM stereo radio entertainment system. But I don't have the cable to connect my phone so I could get the radio. But I feel a bit of a frother doing that. Why is the traction control light showing up and the ABS showing up? Why is that? Hmm, I don't know why those lights are flashing. I'd have thought they'd have gone off by now. Oh, the radio's just kicked into life.
Yeah, this is a quick bike. Alright, let's try the menu button. Ah, there we go. Menu, range, trip auto. Ah, there we go. Okay, so that's nice and easy to switch the um, heated grips on. Just go on the menu function. You can, can rotate through to what temperature you want. Let me just whack them up a little bit more. Now, BMW heated grips are like the surface of the sun. So that may well be too hot. Oh, it's got a heated seat. <laughs> oh, let's give it two. It's a little bit sharp this morning. There's no denying it, this thing is rapid. It just doesn't feel quick because it's not got that growl. It's so refined being an inline engine, a six cylinder, I believe they're called. I think they're called inline, are they? It's like an inline four, but six cylinders, so inline six, I assume. It just sounds and feels so much smoother. Yeah, I've got no idea how you work most of these buttons, how you work everything. So we'll leave that. This thing's about the size of that double-decker bus, but it can nip in and out of traffic, no problem at all. Lovely overrun on the exhaust. Yeah, I've got no idea what all the buttons are though. Pass. I love that quick shifter. Have I mentioned that yet? Woo! Lewis Nam, the smell of weed. Seems like the whole of South London just stinks of weed. Woo! This thing is effortlessly fast. Because it doesn't make a song and dance about it with the engine, it's so refined. You just, you don't appreciate how quick you're going. Like this morning, to get any sort of sound coming out of this bike, to make it feel like I'm giving it some, I have to give it some. In which case you look down and you're doing daft speed particularly for a built-up area. So perhaps this isn't going to be conducive to keeping your license for too long. Certainly if you're doing some commuting through the town. But I imagine this on your big long tours, I imagine this would be a right weapon. Well, I know it is. You need eyes in your back of your head round here. It's an impressive bit of kit, this, but it just doesn't set me on fire. I mean, the XR was like that. The XR was an incredible machine, but it didn't do anything for me. I think I am. I just need a bit more character from an engine. This is too clinical for me. Fast, though. Maybe I should try the RS. That's a boxer engine. But then, is it going to be any quicker than a... GS? I don't know. Oh, I'm way to find out. Right, I'm gonna have to fill up with some fuel. Right. Well, switching it off and switching it on again. So the screen automatically comes back up to whatever level you had it set at before you switch that off, which is quite a neat little feature. Ah, okay, yeah. Traction control and everything's gone off. It's still got this light on. What's that all about? That warning light, don't know what that means. So I just popped 15 pounds in, and it says I can do 124 miles on 15 pounds worth of fuel. I'm currently doing 78 miles to the gallon, but my average has been 45. It's weird, it feels, across the knees, it, to me it feels narrower than the GS. I think maybe the GS is just more sculpted around the tank area. I'm not sure, it kind of just feels, feels like my knees are higher up 
and sort of pointing inward. It, this thing just glides. It is just gliding. Yeah, it's fast, folks. It is fast. Wow. This will see the end of your license pretty quickly. You sat in a bubble behind this massive screen. You're on a heated seat with heated grips. You're in a cocoon of effortless power. Yeah, I'm going to have to take this straight back to the showroom. I'm going to go to jail on this. Ah, the warning light's gone out. Don't know what that meant. Well, folks, I'm no missing in fly or lamb shops when it comes to the facts and figures about bikes. I tend to just get on them and ride them. If they feel fast, they feel fast. However, you want to know the stats? Check the screen out now. Now, a touring weapon like this does not come cheap. It's BMW after all, folks. Nothing is cheap. Except the coffee. The coffee is free when you turn up at a BMW showroom. Ooh, and it's good coffee, plus they do a nice chocolate too. Oh yes. But for a fully kitted out weapon like this, you're gonna be looking north of 20 grand. This is the K1600 GT, and this as is goes for. Yeah. GS doesn't seem that bad now, does it? So if I had a spare 20 odd grand, would I buy one of these? I've got to admit, folks, no, I wouldn't. And here's why. Why would I need this over, say, the GS? Top speed, a little bit quicker overall, because it's got more torque. But to me, it doesn't feel as maneuverable as the GS. Seating position-wise, it doesn't feel as comfortable as the GS. The biggest thing for me is it just doesn't tickle my danglies. The engine is clinical. I'm definitely a fan of your engines with character now, like your V4s, your triples, twins, boxer engines, that sort of stuff. Having said that, I still want to try the new GSX-R R1000. I want to give that engine a go. This one doesn't set the soul on fire. It's a great bike, like the XR. It's a great bike, but it's not a nut tickler. Oh God, I think it just tickled my danglies. Wow. Wow, this bike just came alive. Sheesh. Still don't think I'd have one over the GS though. Certainly over a 1250 GS. So let's have a look at her. What's this thing actually look like? I mean, it even has central locking, look. I mean, why wouldn't you have a central locking, hydraulically operated, internally lit and carpeted back box? Why wouldn't you have that? Or a glove box. Again, also centrally locked. Oh, controls. I bet you that, well, that must be for the sound. What an idiot. So there she is. I think it looks like an angry owl. A demonic owl. I don't think it's a bad looking bike at all folks, I really don't. What do you think? <laughs> right, let's have a little bit of radio too. <laughs> now I'm enjoying it. Lovely turning circle on this. Very good turning circle. So folks, this is just a first ride impression of the BMW K1600. GT. If I get the chance to take one out on a bit of a more long-term loan, I'll probably do another more thorough spanking video. But for now, hope you've enjoyed it. If this is the first time you've checked out the channel, thanks very much for stopping by. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button, hit the like, and feel free to leave a comment. Alright folks, look after yourselves, keep getting out there, and remember, live your life. <laughs>